love the forest in the fall. It's constantly changing. Like everything else, it has a cycle all its own. Hi, I'm Emmy. Did you know that forests cover nearly half of Wisconsin? That's over 16 million acres of forest. Unfortunately, in the past 30 years, we've lost nearly 20% of Wisconsin aspen forests. That's over 600,000 acres of forest lost due to a lack of appropriate aspen management. Other forest types are literally stealing the sunlight and taking over land that once supported aspen. In turn, this has a negative impact on the ability for aspen to regenerate itself and maintain its importance in tomorrow's forest community. Today we're going to meet some people who are involved with the Wisconsin Young Forest Partnership, a dedicated group of concerned citizens who created a program designed to help folks learn more about one of our most precious resources. We'll hear from expert biologists, wildlife and forest ecologists, and a few landowners who have become part of the movement to regenerate young forests in Wisconsin. We're trying to gather partners together and work more closely with landowners to try to achieve more uh, young forest management on the landscape. We see that that's a major concern. A lot of species that are declining because they're in need of young forest. And a lot of that young forest potential is on private lands. And we've got a lot of organizations that are somewhat working in it. And we thought it'd be really important to start getting those organizations to work more closely together. The impetus for the whole thing is a longstanding decline in young forests, like the very young aspen you see behind me here in the picture. Uh, coupled with the knowledge that this is this type of habitat is critically important to a large number of wildlife species that people are familiar with and that are very important to the North Woods and that if, if this habitat which is very sensitive to management uh, as it continues to disappear so do those wildlife species that are dependent on it. Wildlife use young forests virtually immediately. Uh, there are critters such as a chestnut-sided warbler, uh, morning warbler, eastern towhee that will utilize a, a forest that's only three or four years of age. Uh, rough grouse, a little bit, a little bit older. Uh, rough grouse aren't going to use a forest until it gets up to maybe eight or ten years of age. But interestingly, what we're finding out now is that birds that breed in mature forests also need those young forests on the landscape. The young from some of the birds that use mature forests, immediately after they leave the nest, will move into the young forest habitats for protection and because those young forests have an excellent, very, very abundant supply of insects. And the young birds need those insects to grow and develop and put down a fat layer for migration. A wide array of wildlife species depend on young forest management, anything from warblers to black bears. Um, there's over 22 bird species in Wisconsin that use young forests for at least part of their life activities. Uh, rabbits, rough grouse, so small game, large game, and non-game all re rely on young forest management. See, a forest needs patches of trees of different ages to be sustainable. Think about it like a, a population of people in a city. If you had all old elderly people and you didn't have any young people or adults, just elderly people, you'd have concerns about the longevity of your population. It's the same with the forest. You need something at each age. A lot of folks are averse to cutting trees. They think that's the wrong thing to do. But in this case, managing forests for young forests like this, uh, while it could be an, an analogous to cutting your hair, I like to think of it as mowing your lawn. And if you want the lawn to persist, you have to mow it occasionally. If you want the aspen to persist, you have to mow it periodically. Basically, uh, the original family land, uh, my great-grandfather was a logger in the area. And around, probably around 1910, he started purchasing pieces of property, logging them, and then hanging on to them instead of just logging other people's land or um, logging it and selling it. And he basically passed that on to his seven children, of which one of them was my grandmother. And that land's been in the family ever since. This area was cut completely down to the ground. The only thing that you saw were basically stumps and treetops. The rest of the, the slash they didn't take out of here. Within, within about four to six months, it was eight to 10 feet tall. The logger came back and said this was one of the best regenerations that he'd seen. And what's nice is for the people that don't like seeing a clear cut, when you first came out here, you did see the stumps and you saw the treetops and you could look all the way around and see how big an area had been cut. But now it is, here it is 18 months later, and when you're walking the trails, 
you can't even see 20 feet into the woods. We'll hear more from Bob's family in the second part of this three-part series. Thanks for taking the time to watch part one of this series. In part two, we'll meet some new folks and dispel some old myths.